Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I got another new series for you guys. So I brought in the happy music because this video series is all about having a good time doing paintovers for all my patron pals. Both giving critiques and hearing critiques for other people are still a couple of the best tricks for improving your art, so this should be fun. I'll try to focus on just one or two main points for each paintover just to make things easy to follow. I think that's it, so let's get into it. The first art I have here is a drawing by Viper. It's a cool name. It looks like we have a girl doing some stretching, very athletic. Uh, the first things that jump out to me are just a couple minor anatomical issues, mainly that elbow that's front and center. Um, but I think one of the main points I want to make for this one is the use of more T lines because you're using a lot of what I'll call the shattered line technique where you have a lot of little shattered lines just kind of getting smaller which can be a great technique but I feel like you're overusing it for this thing and I think simple T lines or terminating lines and I'll give you a little example of what those are over here um, but that's just when a line kind of terminates under another line it usually has a nice little taper and it creates a nice organic feel and a little more form to everything. So I think that would be a little more useful than maybe using all these shattered lines because shattered lines are usually representing something a little more rough, maybe something more hairy. I don't know, they don't feel quite appropriate for everything. So let's try that and see how things work out. When it came to the anatomy, I just wanted to make sure that one elbow was a little more accurate, so I moved it up a little on the arm. Now it feels like it's in the middle a little bit. It just feels a little more appropriate like that, especially with how her hand is and how she's stretching. Uh, for the other arm, I just thought it would be useful to just get rid of some stuff. Sometimes the best improvement is just a little bit of simplification. Anyway, those hand glove things were feeling a little bit too lumpy, so I just wanted to make sure those were nice and streamlined as well. We don't want to have any extra curves in the silhouette that might be throwing off the brain. We want to keep things as natural to the silhouette as we can. So a simple silhouette, very angular, keep things focused, always a good time. So there's a lot of little minor changes I'm making here and there, but I think the second main point I want to make can be best represented in the face, and that is the use of angles versus curved lines. If I look at your face you made here, there's just a lot of curved lines everywhere, and personally, I think when you're doing organic stuff, lots of arms, anatomy, and everything, I think you should be trying to throw in as many angles as you can. I know it sounds counterintuitive, you know, using angles for organic stuff, but personally I think that's what makes it look really good. So you can see here you had round shapes everywhere. You had a nice round head, a round face that kind of curved into the forehead and back around the jaw, and it didn't really have any angles anywhere. Uh, but I'm trying to just mix it up and throw in as many little angles as I can. I noticed even on the ponytail in the back you had these curved lines that were just kind of flowing into and out of it. It looked very water-esque, um, so I think bringing in those angles will make it look a lot more interesting and appealing and graphical, which is always something good when it comes to gestures. Now you might notice that the anatomy is still a little bit off in my little paint over sketch here, but I really just wanted to capture the exact same proportions and everything of the original drawing. I don't want to just redraw it in my style or make it completely different. So I thought it would be nice to really try to keep it exactly the same, but just change minor things like the angle versus curve stuff, or little tiny things like T-lines versus shattered lines and see how it looks. So once again, you know, you can see there's a little bit of my personal line stylings, but for the most part, I felt like I keep every facial feature and every detail in the exact same spot. So hopefully that makes it a little better as a critique and a paint over, because I don't really just want to draw my own. That's not really a paint over. That's just my own interpretation. So I'm not going to stray too far. So just minor changes here and there, but I like it a little bit better. I think it looks a little bit better. So that's going to be my tip for you. And here you can see me flipping before and after. And hopefully you like the changes. Hopefully you're not like that sucks. She looks more mannish or something. I don't know. Maybe she does, but I tried to keep it as accurate as I could. Let's move on. Our next piece of art is going to be a study by Thomas Seffer. So he laid out his study here. We got the original there, Kobe Whitmore. And it looks like he was going through, making grids, doing all kinds of stuff like that. He did ask me any suggestions how to become independent of using grids. 
And I would just say relationships are kind of the key for that, I would think. Um, so just trying to figure out relationships that work personally for you. So maybe thinking about how different things relate to other things. So maybe where the eye relates to some fold somewhere else or some chin thing. It doesn't have to be very anatomical. It's more of a geometric thing. But anyway, let's get over to the study. So it's looking pretty good. You know, it's solid. It's not like a whole lot of horrible issues going on. I think the main thing I want to focus on personally is really going back and drawing in that whole thing that I talked about in the painting like a sculptor video, which is really making sure you have nice crisp edges on one side and nice blending on the other side. So it's a lot of cutting and smoothing. So a nice cutting edge on one side and then a nice smoothing gradient on the opposite side. And that usually creates a nice painterly look. You can see that in most paintings and the original here has definitely a lot more of that. You never want your gradients to just flow in and out like a blob. You want to have that nice edge control on one side. Uh, so for the chin, we can darken that up a bit. You can see I'm messing with it here. Just getting that nice edge on one side and then really blending it on the other side. I felt like your blending kind of cut short a little bit. It could have blended out a little more to really highlight that edge. Um, so that's just one quick little thing. And also you can see that in the eye area as well. So we got to be very mindful of knowing which side do we want to cut and which side do we want to blend. And you'll get used to it the more you do it, but when I look at the original painting, I feel like there's a definite cut of light and then a blending off on the right side of her right eye, I guess. And then it has that nice little shadow edge, which also has an edge on it and then blends off nicely as well. So there's a lot of little cut edges and blended edges that are just kind of mixed around everywhere. And I'll put a little diagram here next to her face just to really push home the whole cutting and blending thing. Really, really summing it up as well as I can. Hard edge, blended edge, keep that going as many times as you can for every plane change, for every value shift. Always be checking to see if there is a hard edge or a soft edge. And usually there's one on one side and one on the other, especially for organic stuff. But that's really all old news, so I want to show you a new trick that I'm just going to make up for this video because a lot of people ask, how do I do those brushes and I don't have painter and I can't do those same brushes and it takes me forever to cut and smooth. So I'm going to try a whole new technique for you guys and I think you're going to like it. So on the chin here, I noticed it can use a little extra pop of light, especially under her bottom lip. It didn't feel like her lips were coming out enough into the jowls and the cheek. So if I just use the select tool and make a nice little oval where her chin is, and then I select the inverse of that and then go to a soft airbrushing tool and just lightly brush over the top of it, you'll see that it creates a nice sharp cut with a nice blend going off in the opposite direction. So it really captures that whole hard edge and blended edge thing extremely well. Honestly, I'm kind of amazed at how well and easy that worked. So maybe you guys can experiment with that more on your own. That chin actually looks really nice with this approach. Well, maybe don't use that approach the whole time. Maybe once you're like 90% of the way done painting, then you can start doing stuff like that to really finish it off and make little value changes pop. Uh, but there you go. That's my trick of the day for you guys. Selection tool plus airbrush. Seems to work pretty well. The before image looked really good, but there's always room for more improvements here and there. Let's see, what else do we got here? We have a painting by Rafael Silvas, and I know Rafael pretty well, and that there's one thing I know about his paintings, it's that they're never finished. So let's see if we can give him some good advice on finishing things. The silly part is, he'll usually come to me with a painting at this level and say, what else can I possibly do? Like he doesn't know where to finish it or where to go from here. So I'm just gonna explain it once again and I'll let everyone know. It's all about edges. So I'm gonna be doing a paint over on this one using nothing but a hard edge, full opacity brush, you know, like the crappiest brush you can imagine. No opacity, none of that. Just a straight hard edge brush, really just focusing on edges. Of course, hard edges are the things that create contrast, so I'm kind of going overboard, but for the purposes of a real painting, uh, you would really want to use them just in the areas where you'd want to draw the most focus. So every brush stroke you see on this painting can be made to be a little bit more graphical by just modifying the edges of it just a little bit. We can play with the edges here and there, make sure everything has a cool graphical feeling. We want to really focus on individual brush strokes. 
I know Raphael has always had a personal problem where all of his trees and things just look like soggy turds, so I'm gonna make sure we have nice edges around the trees to make them look like actual foliage. Edge control is also the best way to show texture and surfaces. It shows the different materials of every object. I really want to make sure you can see the edge differences between things like man-made structures like these buildings over here and things that are more natural like rolling hills and trees and whatever else you might need to make. So edge control is going to be my primary critique for Raphael, but I do have a secondary critique and that has to do with the way he does lighting and shadow, especially on a lot of these buildings to the right, it becomes more obvious. He tends to always approach structures in a very monochromatic way, so they'll have a warm highlight and a warm shadow. And it's a lot better artistically and it makes things a lot more pleasant if we can vary those things. So maybe there's a warm highlight and a cool shadow or a cool highlight and a warm shadow. But we need that slight play of different chromas of different warms to really make things look a little bit better and just a little bit more appealing. And as another side note, it's important to remember that lakes and ponds are basically like mirrors. In fact, all bodies of water are like mirrors. And the flatter the body of water is, and the more calm it is, the more like a mirror it is. So we should be seeing a lot of reflections of maybe trees or bushes or whatever else in the water. Just a hint of it. And there you go, with a few minutes of effort, you can turn a quick loose speed painting into a slightly more refined speed painting that's a little more presentable. Alright, the next artwork I have for you guys is this digital painting by Jory Morel. It's quite competent already, and it looks pretty nice. I love a lot of the little details going on. There's just touches of little lace things and a lot of interesting stuff going on. But in some ways, there's almost too much stuff going on, and I feel like it's drawing a lot of attention, especially with how much contrast is going on. So we gotta remember that contrast is what breeds focus. So do we want the focus of this painting to be on her bright hair bun thing and the little details below it? because that's where the strongest contrast is in the whole image. And maybe that's how he wants it, but I'm going to assume he wants the focus to be a little bit more on the face, so I'm gonna do what I can to try to bring the contrast levels over toward the eyes and mouth and nose and everything. I'm just gonna be painting around on the face here, trying to bump up the contrast, especially around the lips and the nostrils and the eye area. And all the while lessening the contrast on things like those weird green veiny looking things, I'm not sure what they are exactly, but on the side of her face, cause those were really drawing all the attention away from the rest of the face. And for the hairline up here, there's just another little note I wanna make. Cause you have the hairline pretty rough, it was all just blurry. But if you add just a hint of detail here and there, let's say like 10% detail, it will make everything feel a lot more finished. I don't want you to go through and try to detail every little strand of hair and every little detail, but when you just add a couple little details to some of it, it makes everything feel like it's more finished. And he generally did a good job on that. You can see the lace details are pretty spread out, which is nice. He didn't overcomplicate things, so I liked that. Although it feels like there just could have been a little bit more edging here and there, especially on her dress and some of the other stuff. Anyway, usually with faces, we like the focus to be right in the eyes. So I tried to bring a little extra contrast around the eyes, maybe a little, little touches of highlights here and there, nothing too crazy, but I think it helped. So now I'm just going around doing some random edge refinement. It feels like everything's a little bit too blurry in certain parts, could have used just a tad more focus. Uh, but there is one last thing I wanna really focus on, and that's this hair bun. If you look at it closely, you can see that he kind of burned in these really dark tones right up against the light blue tones which is creating a whole lot of contrast I feel like it's more than he wants but I also kind of feel like the overall shape of this hair structure kind of feels droopy to me it kind of feels a little a little sad like it's falling um, so I'm not sure you know once again it's a matter of interpretation but I thought it would be nicer to bring it up just a little bit more kind of complete this nice flow triangular shape of the head it might be better, I don't really know, but regardless, I want to lessen the focus on that hair stuff also. Um, so I think I will try to do that just a little bit, while also making parts of the hair a little more angular. Once again, going back to all those previous topics about circular and angular stuff and edge control, I feel like I'm throwing in a little bit of everything on this painting. 
And the last thing I want to do here is just bring in a little bit more compositional balance near the bottom. So I felt like her arm was really creating a lot of weight on one side. And if we can balance that out by maybe having the tress of the arm on the other side show up a little bit, I feel like it, it just kind of works better. Maybe it flows a little better, feels a little more weighted on both sides. I don't know, personal opinion, but I like it more. So that was a lovely painting. I enjoyed being able to mess around with it a little bit. The last artwork I have for you guys today is by A.C. Sullivan, and I don't know exactly what this is. Is it supposed to be some kind of orky creature guy? He's got like some green in his face, maybe some kind of hybrid. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for, but I can tell you that adding a little bit of a brow ridge can make your figure seem a little more masculine. That's one of the masculine traits of the skull, but who knows, maybe it's supposed to be a female. It's possible. Anyway, this was a bit of a tricky one. The goal for a paint over is to make sure you're trying to reach their goal and not just making your own thing. So I was trying to figure out what his actual goal is and seeing how I can help. This character just felt so ugly and sad I gave him little tears, thinking maybe that would help his character, but it wasn't really working and I just... I didn't know what to do. What's the right paint over technique for this one? We've got all those greens. Are they supposed to be there? Who knows? Um, so it occurred to me that maybe I was approaching it the wrong way. Maybe there was some better answer. So I had to take this thing into Photoshop and try to really mess with it. Now in Photoshop, we have something amazing called the Liquify tool. And this is one of the filters and it lets you just move around everything. So I thought maybe he had just gotten way off track with the anatomy and we can save this thing. We can turn it back into a really regular looking normal human. And it was during this process while I was just liquefying everything that I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is starting to feel a little bit familiar. Maybe I'm starting to understand what AC was going for. And as the liquefying continued, I realized that AC wasn't trying to paint some horrible goblin. He was trying to paint Jason Statham. It all started to make sense now and I can really focus on this paint over process and try to help him achieve his goal. I'm going to keep most of the colors he already established and just focus on forming the planes of the face a little better because I think that's where he got off track. All of his facial planes got super exaggerated so I really just had to dial them back a ton. But you can see how even leaving in all those purples and greens, it starts to really work. It starts to make a little more sense. I think we could use a little bit of light blue here and there just to really sell the lighter parts of the stubble. But other than that, I think I'm just going to keep the same exact palette. The neck and body position were definitely a little off as well. So I just decided to repaint those in a more practical manner. After a solid 30 minutes of painting, it really all started to work out. So I think it fell into place pretty nicely and I hope AC is happy with the results. Hopefully he learned a little bit more about painting and facial planes and all that stuff. It's good not to go too crazy with exaggerating and to really just dial it back and keep it pretty simple. Um, but there you go, you can see the before and after here. Um, the colors are pretty much the same. Once again, just moving the facial features around and we managed to capture what you were going for, our little Jason Statham here. We kept the white shirt, but we gave him a little gray jacket just to class it up a little bit. I think the white shirt alone was a little dingy looking, but I guess that's gonna do it for our first episode of Paint Over Pals. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something, and I'll be looking forward to more Paint Over Pal action in the future, maybe once a month. That's the goal anyway. If you're interested in that, you can always hop over to the Patreon. There's the link in the description below. And as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons, not just the ones that gave me art to play with, but all of them as well, big and small. You guys are all wonderful and I love you. 